Good morning guys and welcome to today's vlog. I hope you all had a great week and are enjoying the weekend so far. So today is Saturday and I'm uploading this tomorrow. I actually did vlog this week but I honestly just haven't felt myself and I just looked back at the footage and I felt like everything was so sporadic and I just wasn't me. So I'm gonna vlog today because I've woken up in a great mood. I had 10 hours sleep last night. The sun is shining outside as you can tell. My face is literally reflecting the sun it's very shiny i haven't set my um, foundation in place yet so yeah it's just gonna be a chilled at home saturday vlog and i hope you guys enjoy first things first i need to make some breakfast so i will do that with you guys also last night i made candles um from like leftover candles that i already had melted them all down and then just re-poured them this is one of them and as you can see it hasn't really gone very well um i think you have to pour in the wax at a certain temperature and i didn't do that and then this is the other candle that i made um just from like an old white company christmas candle and basically it was done but there's loads of wax around the edge and i don't want to waste it so yeah and as you can see this is dipped quite a lot in the middle so it was a little bit of a fail but i'm still going to use them i think it's really cute and it's a nice way to kind of reuse and recycle your candles I've just received this delivery from Soft Goat. Um, I saw them on a Scandinavian blogger, I can't remember her name, and the brand just looked amazing. They just sell some beautiful cashmere bits. And look at the packaging, I love good, simple packaging like this. I just think it's beautiful. Oh, look how cute. It says something to brighten your day. So I ordered this like gorgeous brownie oat coloured knit top. It's called the Deco Let Top. I'll link this down below. Um, so it has this gorgeous like square neckline, these big balloon sleeves which come in at the end, which I love. And yeah, it feels lovely. So I will do a little try on haul later. Here's my outfit of the day. It's gonna be kind of hard to show you because it's all black. Um, but I've got this long maxi cardigan on from Pretty Lavish. I also have this in cream and I absolutely love it. It's like wearing a dressing gown in the house without wearing a dressing gown. But yeah, it just looks very chic and um, a little bit glam as well. And then I've got my new look leggings on. Um, these leggings are my favorite pair of leggings. They're not see-through, they fit so well. They're super high-waisted, they come all the way up here. They're a little bit shaping as well. The only thing is I don't know if they still sell them as I have had these quite a while, but if they do, I'll link them down below and hopefully they're the same ones. And then this top is also from New Look. It's just a black bodysuit. Um, and then my Ugg slippers, of course. I thought I'd also try on the soft goat top that I received this morning. And oh, I just love the fit. The sleeves are to die for. It's so soft and snug. I'm 100% cashmere. I think this paired with some jeans would look so nice. Um, but it's also just really comfortable as like an at-home top, just paired with some leggings like I've done here. But yeah, I love it. They also had um, some other colors too, so I'll link it down below. So in today's smoothie, I have got banana, spinach, kale, raspberries, avocado, the beauty chef supplement powder, chia seeds, honey, and I'm just gonna put in some coconut milk as well. So in today's vlog, I really wanted to share some tips with you guys for coping with lockdown and staying sane during lockdown and just helping to keep yourself positive and in a good mental headspace. Somebody commented on my last vlog, actually, I feel like her name was Jessica, saying that she'd really like to see some lockdown tips. So thank you, Jessica, because you've inspired me to share with you guys. So I've written down six things that I think help. First one being, I think it's so important to establish daily and weekly routines. For me, it's so important. There's so much evidence behind the positive effects of routines and habits. And I just think with so much uncertainty in the outside world, it's so important to have some certainty in your little inside world, if that makes sense. Um, also, ignore my plaster. I cut myself twice, one on this finger yesterday, and then today this finger. I'm just gonna move you guys a bit closer. So personally, I have both daily and 
and weekly routines. On the daily, getting up at the same time every day is such an easy way to give yourself a habit. Just set your alarm, get up when the alarm goes. If you struggle with mornings or getting up a little bit earlier, I really recommend the book, The Miracle Morning. I'll link it down below. The book also talks about establishing a good morning routine. So it's a really good book to read right now. And even at the weekends, I still set my alarm because it just gives my day so much more structure. So during the weekdays, I have my alarm set for 7.30 and the weekends it's eight o'clock because just by changing that time slightly, it kind of establishes the difference between the weekday and the weekend. And again, that's something that just gives me more structure. And I think allowing yourself an hour of your set habits in the morning is really beneficial as well. And you can make it really flexible to you and your needs. So if you have a dog, you can walk the dog. If you love exercise, you can incorporate exercise. Um, for me, I have my morning cup of tea, which makes me very happy. I do my journaling, my gratitude. I do a light bit of stretching. And then I'm just ready for the day and I've done the things I need to do to make myself feel better. And then I also have my set evening routine as well. Um, I'll link my morning and evening routines down below. I did film them quite a while ago and I don't know if I do the exact things in the video anymore but it gives you a good idea and hopefully it will give you guys a bit of inspiration part of my evening routine now is to do yoga it was on my new year's resolutions to do it every single day and it's actually something i really look forward to now i used to not dread it but i just didn't love it and i think the reason i didn't love it is because it wasn't something set in my routine i was kind of just doing it when i felt like it at random times but now i have a set time in the evening to do it it just really focused me in and I've actually really started to see the benefits from yoga and I think before I wasn't quite seeing them. Even if you just do 10 minutes, it's better than nothing. It's a good way to kind of stretch your muscles. Like if you're working from home and you're sitting at a desk all day, you really need to get those muscles stretched and relaxed and it's also great for obviously your mental health and practicing breathing techniques and getting that mind-body coordination. So that's daily routines and then on to weekly routines as well. This is definitely something I have established Established this year and in this lockdown that wasn't so much a thing last year and I've just been really loving it it really gives my week some structure I know what to look forward to I know what I need to do when and it's just made my life so much easier like for example Mondays are my admin days those are the days I just sit at the desk and just get loads of work done Tuesdays that's the day I often have meetings and calls um, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm taking photos or I'm filming or I'm shooting. Fridays, I'm editing and wrapping up for the week. And I've also been treating myself to a takeaway every, normally Friday, but sometimes Saturday. And again, that just really establishes the weekend for me. Like, okay, it's the weekend now. I can enjoy myself, I can treat myself and I can relax. Like, I don't have to like cook any dinner or tidy up and stuff like that. And it's just something to like really look forward to. I often have a glass of wine with it. And it's just kind of like a nice little date night with myself kind of situation i also do just like half an hour friday clean get the house really tidy and lovely for the weekend so clearing up all of my work stuff away um i do still work at the weekend um but that's only because it keeps me sane but clearing up like the majority of my work stuff away is great and then just lighting candles making things really cozy and lovely and aesthetic it just makes me so happy and it makes me feel so settled as well and then i've also included one big walk into my weekly routine so that's normally on saturday or sunday i do daily walks every single day oh that's another thing i do on a daily that i've got to mention daily walks are so important i did a poll on my story the other day asking how many of you guys did daily walks and i think it was only I say only but it was around 60% which means 40% aren't and I was that 40% last year just because I was so busy it was horrible weather I didn't want to go outside and I didn't want to make that time out of my day but making myself do daily walks this year has honestly just been so so good for me again it gives me something to do that I kind of just have to do because it's in my daily routine it gives me exercise it gives me vitamin d it's also a time where I will pop in my airpods and I will ring my family so I'll be walking along and talking catching up but going back to my weekly routine I will do one big walk every weekend so i'll go to like wimbledon common or richmond park and just walk for maybe like three four hours um which is obviously great exercise it just really clears the cobwebs away and makes me feel refreshed ready to go into the next week and then sunday is my facetime day i will facetime my close people and really have a good catch up even if you're facetiming somebody and they're just kind of there in the background almost and you're both doing your things i just think that's really nice especially if you're on your own and it just feels like you have another presence 
there. Like sometimes B and I will FaceTime and we won't even talk. We'll just be doing our own thing. And I think that's really, really nice. Okay, so that was my first tip. That was very long winded, sorry guys. But daily, weekly routines, let's all get them established. Tip number two is do your hair, your makeup, put on a cute outfit and put on perfume. I do this every single day. And when I'm talking hair and makeup, I don't mean like a full face of makeup, blow drying your hair, blah, blah, blah. I don't mean like that. I just mean making yourself look really presentable and feeling good about yourself. It just makes you feel so much better and it's a good way to have a bit of normality as well. And like I said, you can do really low maintenance looks. So for example, the other day I had a hair mask in my hair for three days, but I just scraped it back into a really chic, sleek bun and that just felt far more presentable. With makeup, when I don't wanna do a full face, I'll just put on my SPF, maybe a tinted moisturizer, fill in my brows and add like a nice lip gloss and even that just makes me feel so much better. Perfume as well is just something that makes me feel so happy and I don't know why. Good smells just immediately elevate my mood and I just feel really nice. So I've been wearing perfume every day and I've been loving it even though nobody smells me, maybe the cashier at Waitrose and that's about it, but it makes me happy. And then finally as well, putting on a nice cute outfit. I know it's so tempting just to be wearing like full pajamas or dressing down all day, but getting into like a cute lounge set or a cute lounge outfit that's comfortable, but still nice and put together. Kind of like the outfit I'm wearing today. It just makes the world of difference. And, and weirdly for me, it really energizes me. I feel so much more energetic and active when I'm in an outfit that is cute and fits nicely. Even if you're having a lazy day and you have decided, right, today I'm just gonna take the day off. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna watch TV. Just getting out of like your pajamas or your bed clothes or your dressing gown into a fresh new set of pajamas. Again, will just make you feel so much better. Tip number three is to keep everything really clean and tidy. We're spending so much time in our homes and obviously we're living in them more, they're getting more kind of used, I guess. It's so important to have a nice environment around you. It's crazy how much your environment has an effect on your mind. I know it's obvious, but clear space, clear mind, it's so true. So I have little daily like routines of tidying up. I do about 10 minutes. I set a timer on my phone, which really motivates me. And I'll just spend 10 minutes cleaning, tidying, and just resetting the space. And I just find that makes me feel so much calmer and happier in my space. When there's lots of stuff, marks on the surface or stuff in the sink, I just don't feel at ease. So trying to do this habit every single day, it will slowly just become natural to you. So if you do struggle with keeping things clean and tidy, Tidy, just really force yourself 10 minutes every single day and it will eventually just become second nature and it also just makes you feel productive like you've actually done something it's a task that you set out to do you set a time and you then do it so yeah um, my next point is food so having really good food in the house great snacks making your favorite meals, eating really well, has so many benefits. Um, obviously like there's the health benefit of eating well. You know, health at the moment is more important than ever and keeping our immune system strong is so important. So getting your five a day in. For me, as you guys know, I just whack it all into my smoothies and then that's my five a day done, but then I obviously will have like veggies with every single meal as well. And also for me, snacks are just something that make me happy. I love to snack, I love, I love eating, I love having something in my cupboard to look forward to. There's nothing worse than when you open the fridge and there's nothing there. Cooking all of your meals from scratch as well. Also try cooking more meals from scratch because think about it, we are saving so much time at the moment um, from like commuting. Say you had an hour to work every day pre-lockdown. That's two hours of your day that you now have back. And we just no longer have the excuse of I don't have time because we have so much time at the moment. Saying that you can easily make like hand cooked meals in like 15 minutes. That's what I do anyway. I'm not a big fan of cooking. So I make really quick, easy, simple, fresh meals. Tip number five is to journal. And this is something I have done for such a long time now. It really helps me mentally. It just gets all of my kind of clutter in my brain onto a piece of paper. And another thing as well, that I'd never really thought about with journaling is it's a great thing to look back on. I was looking back at my journal from this time last year and it's just crazy how much things have changed and how much I've grown as well. And you don't really ever think about your growth in certain with certain things because you see it every single day. And looking 
and comparing myself last year to this year has really made me feel very proud of myself and made me realize how far I've come and I think everyone should enjoy that when I say journaling I don't really mean like a diary it's more just kind of bullet points really really quick saying how I'm feeling saying if I have any like worries any anxieties um, if I'm really happy um, and then also filling in my five minute journal which again I'll link down below but you basically write down three things you're grateful for three things that make your day great and then your daily affirmations as well and if you don't have the five minute journal um, you can literally just write it down in a notepad like this which is just plain and then my final tip is surrounding yourself with company and that might sound a bit weird because obviously i am on my own but i am constantly listening to audiobooks and podcasts and in the evening i'm watching sex in the city which i'm kind of living vicariously through at the moment because they obviously have such a fun social life in sex in the city and that's not happening right now but yeah just constantly surrounding yourself with good energy and what you consume visually and what you hear is just like what the, the food you eat like if you eat good food you're going to be more healthy and if you listen to positive things with good vibrations then that is going to go into you and then you're going to project that out i recently read oprah winfrey's book i think it's called the things i know i'm going to link it down below but it's just a really lovely positive humbling book and listening to it during the day just made me feel really happy i'm currently listening to the audiobook visualization um, which is very similar to the book The Secret. It's all about visualization and manifesting. Listening to that um, just gives me good vibes and it gives me lots of inspiration. I'm also listening to The Girls' Bathroom as well by Chintzia and Sophia and I just find it so funny, it makes me laugh. And then one thing I'm actually not doing a lot is listening to the news, just because it is so negative, obviously, and it is so kind of draining. Saying that it's obviously very important to keep up to date with current affairs so what I normally do is I'll have like a quick scroll through the BBC News app in the morning um, I'll also ring my dad and I ask him like dad what have you got to tell me about the news like what's going on and he gives me a bit of a rundown and that just keeps me in a bit of a more positive mindset um, one thing with the news I've never understood is why they always make it so negative like the whole world isn't negative like not everything is negative they could easily share more positive stories that will really uplift people but they never really do like they'll add like the odd story in right at the end but yeah i really wish sometimes they'd come at it from a positive angle rather than a negative angle and my final tip is just to really give yourself like some credit give yourself a break what we are going through right now is crazy you are allowed to feel upset you're allowed to feel angry you are allowed to feel all of your emotions and don't feel bad for that don't feel bad if you're having if you're struggling mentally at the moment because so many people are and just because some people have it worse than you doesn't mean that your feelings aren't valid so i think it's really important to recognize those feelings and again journal them and just give yourself and allow yourself to you go through that and doing whatever you need to do to make yourself feel better if exercising those makes you feel better make sure you exercise if just sitting on the sofa doing nothing all day is what you need to reset yourself do that and i know it isn't always that easy because because we obviously have other commitments and things are hard but even just taking half an hour out of your day to give yourself that you time and that could even mean waking up half an hour earlier but just giving yourself time to really look after yourself and prioritize yourself as well anyway i know that these tips were quite kind of focused on people who are staying at home i really don't mean to exclude anyone who is a key worker and is working and can't do these things but i think no matter what you're doing right now and if you're working or if you're not working if you're furloughed if you're working from home i think these tips there is something in there for everybody and you can apply it in your own way to your own schedule so yeah i really hope it's helped somebody we're all in this together and i just love you all so much so never feel like you guys are alone um anyway god i don't know how long i've been talking for <laughs> now i'm gonna do my nails i've just realized that i had mascara under my eye the whole time i was filming that but yeah my nails i haven't been touched in a while and they're not looking their best so i'm gonna do a little at home gel manicure and show you guys how i do it here is my little setup I've got some cuticle cutters, a nail file, a cuticle stick, I don't really know what this is called, a soft buffer nail file, my lamp, and then my colour, my base, my top, 
and some cuticle oil. So I start off with my cuticles and I will just push them back with this side. And then with the clippers, I'll just gently clip away any dead skin and the cuticles. I literally find the cuticles so satisfying. I could do this all day long. You obviously don't have to do this part of it, but I just really like doing it. And I also just think it makes everything look a little bit neater. I then go ahead and shape my nails. Um, this nail file is from Sally's. Ordinary files that you get in like boots and stuff, they just don't cut it. These ones are so much better. I normally just do straight across and then slightly round off the edges. Okay, and then we get our soft buffer nail file and literally buff the, the surface of your nail. And what this does is it gives the gel something to grip onto. And then you want to go wash your hands so there's no like dust and stuff like that. And then just paint on the base coat. I'll link this one down below. Just make sure you buy one which is specifically for gel nails. And then I'll put under the lamp for 60 seconds. And then we can go in with the gel colour. This colour is a beautiful pinky nude and it's called Bare Lingerie. Um, again, I'll link this down below. And then just pop under the nail lamp for another 60 seconds. Here's what my nails look like after just one coat. As you can tell, it's just such a beautiful colour. I did cut myself, so ignore that little red blob. Um, but I'm going to do one more coat, so it's kind of semi-opaque. And then finish off with the top coat. Here's what two coats look like. And now finally, going in with the top coat, which sets everything into place. off with a little bit of cuticle oil and here is the finished result which happened to match perfectly with my flowers yeah as you can see very very natural looking but just with a bit of a pink tinge and obviously very shiny as well which i just love and i would do my other hand but currently it's covered in cuts so i'm gonna wait <laughs> So it's a bit later on in the afternoon now and I'm going to go for my daily walk and I also want to get some ingredients because I want to show you guys how I make my ginger and lemon tonic because I do it slightly differently at the moment and I also want to buy ingredients for dinner I'm going to make the famous TikTok pasta um this is the one that I'm talking about everyone's going crazy about it so I want to try it out for myself the thing is I don't like tomatoes in fact I hate tomatoes like they're my worst thing ever but cooked I don't mind them the texture just weighs me out, so I might adapt it slightly to my own, but I'm just writing down the ingredients right now, so I can go. Here's a little cute OOTD. So I've got my new look coat on, my Louis Vuitton bag, um, my Alexander McQueen trainers, which I've had for about three years now, and I'm just obsessed with them. Even though they're not very trendy anymore and cool, they're honestly just the most comfortable shoes I own, and yeah, I love them. Oh, and then my hat is from Everlane. Hello guys, I am back. It is so cold outside, it's literally zero degrees. I've done a little food shop, I've got some ingredients. It took me like an hour to leave the house because I lost my keys. And you know when you put something in the same place every single time you use them? For example, your keys. And I just could not find them anywhere and I was just going insane. I knew that they were in the house somewhere because I can't leave the house without them. It took me an hour to find them, but they were actually like, somehow they got tangled up in my sheets 
So I must have like popped them on my bed and then they got tangled up anyway. So I'll do a little haul for you guys what I got. So I got some spinach, I got some popcorn to snack on later. Um, these cookies are insane, especially dipped into tea. Um, and they're just addictive, I love them. Um, I got some more olive oil, some basil. I got this pasta, which is like extra large, and I just love that. I got tomatoes, guys. This is the first time I've ever bought tomatoes in my life. So I feel like I'm going against myself, but hopefully it'll be nice. Got some bananas, some feta, lots of ginger. This ginger is very, very rooty, so it looks very difficult to kind of get the skin off but hopefully it'll be okay um and then some lemons as well another thing i bought were these biotin tablets i've been taking biotin for years and then the last two months i've been trying out a new hair vitamin brand he actually wanted to do some sponsored content with me but i said i'd try it out first so i've been trying for two months and honestly yeah i just haven't seen drastic enough difference to be able to promote it and for me to promote something or advertise something or like partner up with a brand i actually have to really really love the products not just like semi like them so yeah i thought i'd just buy some new biotin instead and see if this made any difference because my hair overall is nice and healthy but it just doesn't grow um it gets to the length it is at now which is just below my boobs and then it just stops it takes years to grow anything longer and i just want it to be really really long like long long because i've kind of gone through different biotin brands um the last ones i used were from amazon and they were good but they weren't like wow good if you know what i mean and then i remembered that when i was like maybe 19 i used to take these from holland and barrett and these are a lower dosage these are 1000 whereas i normally take 10,000. but i seem to remember they literally made my hair grow like grass so i'm gonna give these another go i'll let you guys know how i get on anyway i'm really hungry so i'm gonna make the pasta exciting times okay so i've just popped all of the tomatoes around half a block of feta in the tiktoks they were like these huge big baking trays but obviously i'm just cooking for one so i've like half the recipe so we've just got like one vine of tomatoes i've also put in a garlic clove and then a half a feta and then i'm just going to drizzle some olive oil add some salt also adding a bit of pepper and some basil and i've popped that in the oven at 200 degrees so that stays in the oven for 35 minutes i know i said i was going to make ginger and lemon tonic but i'm actually scared because the amount of cuts on my fingers i feel like the lemon is just going to hurt so much but it's in my recipes highlight over on my instagram um i'll do a proper in-depth one next time i promise so whilst that is in the oven i'm just going to do a really quick 20 minute yoga flow to get that yoga in like i was talking about earlier today i'm going to be doing the boho beautiful full body yoga 20 minute yoga flow to feel amazing and reconnect i have just finished yoga it was a really lovely session um, I've just poured myself a glass of wine and taken the dish out of the oven. I'm thinking of actually blending this just because, like I said, tomatoes just scare me a bit. And then I can blend up the garlic as well. But wow, this smells amazing. Okay, I take it back. I'm not going to blend it. Um, it actually just kind of disintegrates into a big mush. I've just given it a taste test though. It's good. It's very, very fettery and quite salty, but it is good. And then whilst I wait for the pasta, I'm just setting up Sex and the City to watch. Um, it's been my latest obsession. You guys were actually the ones who made me get into it. I said on my story that I was watching the movie and so many of you were like, have you not watched the series? And I actually hadn't, and I don't know why. I think it's just because it's not very accessible. But I managed to find it on Now TV, and I have binged it so bad. I'm on the second season already, and I'm just, I love it. I just think it is so entertaining, and even though it is quite old now, I think the first one was filmed in 1998. 
maybe which was a year after i was born so some of the things are quite dated but it's still so relevant um so yeah if you haven't watched the series highly recommend you do oh my god how unreal does this look and here is the finished result i've just added a bit more fresh basil onto the top of it um i've just tried a bit and honestly it is 10 out of 10 i am obsessed it is honestly so good you all have to try this so just been sat on the sofa getting really emotional um i just put a photo on my instagram oh my god i'm actually really emotional um i just put a photo up on instagram just saying thank you so much for 400k just been sitting here the last hour or so just thinking about how lucky i am to have you guys and have such an amazing support system i just honestly wish i could give something to every single one of you um i feel i feel so soppy sorry guys this isn't normally me um but yeah honestly it just really means the world to me and um i just feel so grateful to have created such a like amazing kind nice community of mostly women and it's just so amazing and so heartwarming like i don't know what i've done to deserve such lovely like people in my life and like you guys are part of that and yeah i can just never say thank you enough so i'm gonna end this vlog on that note i hope you enjoyed this video sorry for getting soppy and have a lovely rest of the week bye Mwah.